The deadliest sin of muscle building. This is hands down one of the things that's holding most people back from getting the dream body that they want. And it's a shame because oftentimes when I get on consultations or I receive questions in person, most people ask me, Phil, what kind of program should I be running? Should it be a split routine, full body? What should I run? Or they'll ask me, what kind of protein powder should I buy? These questions, although they have some merit, this is like the ornaments on a Christmas tree. This is not gonna really make or break your progress. What is gonna make or break your progress is the training, the nutrition, and the sleep. And the sleep is basically what today's episode is all about. Now I know you guys are about to click X on this video and I would have thought about doing the same thing in the past, but I'm gonna break down why sleep is so important, why it's so vital for your gains, along with some practical approaches you could take to dramatically improve your sleep immediately after watching this video. Okay, so first of all, when it comes to training and nutrition, these things are important. But at the same time, if you're not getting your sleep in and you're showing up to the gym, you're just dragging your feet and you know the program says you need to hit a certain amount of reps or certain weight, even your spotter says, look, you could do two more, you won't have those extra reps in the tank if you're just tired all the time. The intensity won't be high. And what ends up happening with a lot of people is they don't go as intense as they could on their sets. So then they start contemplating on the programs working or not. You know, think maybe I should be doing more sets. Maybe I'm not doing enough, but the truth is they actually are doing enough. They actually have a lot of volume, but they can't do it in an intense fashion because they're just running on so little fuel. They're just so tired all the time. So basically optimizing your sleep along with your nutrition, but the sleep especially, this will give you free energy. So when you come to the gym, you could have more output. But not only that, but if you have you know, a business, or you, know, you have a nine to five job, relationships, whatever the case is, you could put more energy into those as well because you have the extra sleep. So it's deeper than just the gym. Obviously it's a fitness channel, so I'll be relating it to fitness in this video. But this could literally help elevate your life in so many different areas. And it's free, you don't have to pay for this. You literally just get more sleep. But I understand that some people have you know, certain bad habits or certain types of schedules that are preventing them to do so. So this is where I'm gonna transition into the actionable steps you can start taking to get more sleep. So the first thing, very simple, is to start upping your standards of the sleep that you want. Oftentimes people don't shoot for a certain number, but they'll end up getting lower. I used to shoot for seven to eight hours. Nowadays I shoot for eight to nine. And on a very bad day, I'll end up getting maybe seven and a half, which is perfectly fine because that's the minimum effective dose I'm willing to work with. And I could still do a lot of damage with that. I could still be close to being my best self with 7.5. But you know, other days I'll get more, which I'll get into in other tips. So the next tip is, and keep in mind, a lot of these tips are not so set in stone. You know, if you only leave with like four or five of them, it's perfectly fine. So you don't have to take it to the first letter, but understand that they could benefit you. But this one is try not to take cash grabs if it's going to comp compromise your sleep, right? So in the past, I've done it myself. So all these things I've experimented with myself, talked to other people about it as well from their experiences. And in most cases, it's not worth it. If you could get seven hours of sleep and now you have a job that I could pay you a good amount of money, but now you're losing two hours of sleep, you're working with five. In many cases, it's not worth it. What's gonna end up happening is later on throughout the day, you're gonna need even more sleep. You're gonna sleep later on in the day, that's gonna mess up your cycle even more, and it's gonna create this, this bad pattern that you don't necessarily want. So in an ideal world, the two are not mutually exclusive. You can make a lot of money and still get your sleep. So you don't have to compromise one for the other. And I only know this because you know, in the past, some clients would tell me, look, I could do this time, but it was extremely early and I decided to take it anyways because obviously it, it seemed like it was beneficial for both parties, but I ended up learning the hard way, ended up sleeping more later on, and it was a vicious cycle. So now I set boundaries, I have certain times I train clients, and you know, there's no questions asked. You can't put a price tag on my sleep because it's gonna impact the rest of my day and the extra money, it won't even be worth it. So that's secondly. Thirdly, we have optimizing the quality of your sleep. So oftentimes people, they may not work with a lot of sleep, but you can still make do with at least getting quality sleep with let's say seven hours. So an easy actionable step you could take is to get curtains in your room. If you live, for example, downtown, you have tons of noise, you have tons of light coming in, you're gonna have interrupted sleep. You want uninterrupted sleep. 
So you could get some headphones to cancel out the noise, not sponsored by them. You could also get, for example, a sleeping mask. And what's important with the sleeping mask is you want to get a large one. So I'm not sponsored by this either, but you want one that ideally covers half your face. So I'll show you guys right now. Put it on. The one I had in the past would just cover my eyes. This one covers literally a big chunk of my face. I can't see anything. It doesn't come off. And I usually do wake up with it on. But that brings me to my next point is that I still have the curtains where I'm still sleeping in pitch black. So worst case scenario, if it comes off, no problem. I'm still sleeping in pitch black anyways. And my quality of sleep is still high. I'll add in one for optimizing your sleep, which is for the mouth breathers out there. You know, if you tend to breathe a lot through your mouth, you have trouble breathing through your nose, you could actually purchase some nasal strips, They're not sponsored by these either. And basically it's gonna open up the airways in your nose and it's gonna feel a lot better. You're gonna feel like you have an extra pair of lungs. Those might come off later on in the night, but at least you had a couple hours with them and it does go a long way. So those are some ways you could basically just optimize the sleep that you already have. So this next tip is literally money for people who have trouble falling asleep at night due to the reason that they're spending too much time on socials, IG, Facebook, TikTok, or on YouTube, or they're just on their phone playing games. Oftentimes what happens when you're on your phone is there's a lot of colors. You tend to get very stimulated by what's going on, on the screen. There's tons of distractions. Everybody's trying to pull your attention and it's just in a big attention game. So what you could do to counteract that is simply put your phone to a setting called grayscale. So literally everything on my phone, as you could see, is gray. And this goes a long way because suddenly it doesn't look as attractive to just go on social media and you'll still be on it, but you'll spend a lot less time on it because it just, it seems like an old school phone, which is exactly what you want. If you don't want to have it on all day, at least put it on after like six o'clock. And it's also going to be a lot easier on your eyes and it's going to be easier to fall asleep. So that's a little hack you could put in right there. Me personally, that's what I do after six. I put it on and I'm less likely to, you know, just scroll on IG and, you know, just look at stuff that I shouldn't necessarily be looking at because I'm human too. And sometimes, you know, you get distracted. So it's perfectly fine. You find ways around that. So another thing that I've personally been applying outside of the grayscale Super simple is just meditating or reading more. So you could just literally grab a book and catch up on it 30 to 60 minutes before you fall asleep. So if you fall asleep at, for example, 11 o'clock, grab the book at 10, start meditating, do something that's not related to a screen, and this is gonna relax your eyes. You're not gonna be stimulated by a computer, or a TV, or a projector, and it's gonna be that much easier to fall asleep. And this can be very hard for certain people, but it's to not take calls after a certain time. In the majority of cases, people shouldn't have that much access to you where they could literally just pick up their phone and just call you very fast and you have to answer. You could have for certain boundaries, for instance, where you tell people, you know, your friends, close ones, family, that after this time, I'm literally sleeping and I won't be taking calls. It's definitely gonna hurt a lot of people's feelings, but at the same time, look, you wanna get your sleep in and what's gonna end up happening is that if you don't set these boundaries, people are gonna call you at unexpected times and next thing you know, you start getting on these 30 minute phone calls of people. And if you're training in the morning, you're going to miss those sessions, you know, build less muscle because of a phone call you had last night over a conversation you could have just had on a lunch break or the next day. In most cases, it could wait. In most cases, that phone call is not that important. Obviously, the exception being if it's literally an emergency, but besides that, it could wait. This training earlier in the day and midday. So a lot of people, they train late at night, let's say 10 o'clock. And what ends up happening is that if you're hitting a bunch of squat PRs, deadlift PRs, and you leave the gym at, let's say 11.30 PM, a lot of these people tend to fall asleep at like 2 PM. They're so hyped up from the PRs they just hit versus if you do these PRs earlier in the day, say 10 AM, noon, even 7 AM, whatever the case is, this tends to be a lot more favorable for falling asleep later on. So this is personal preference, but try it out for yourself. If you've been training very late and you tend to fall asleep very late, try to switch it up and report back in the comment section. So lastly, this applies to people who weren't able to follow that many tips on today's video, but they still want to make a conscious effort and it's to simply catch up on weekends. So if you've only been able to get, for example, six to seven hours during the week, you could try to compensate on the Saturdays and Sundays, even Friday night, to get, for example, eight to nine hours. You know, I'm sure you're not working every single day. If you are, then 
you know, I understand you got to work hard, but at the same time, if you have the option of, you know, you're working a nine to five job, you have your weekends off, capitalize on that. You know, you could even take a nap. And what I would mention as far as naps is concerned as well, is that I've stopped taking naps after 6 p.m. Because I've noticed if I fall asleep with a nap, I might take it for, let's say, an hour, maybe even an hour and a half. I'm going to have trouble falling asleep later on. So what I try to do is I hold it in a bit longer and I'll try to just go to sleep earlier and I could get a more consistent sleep cycle for the next couple hours versus taking a nap late night. It just doesn't make sense to me. So hope you guys got some benefits from today's video. These are some actionable steps you can start applying right now. And with that being said, comment below. Let me tell, know what you learned and I'll see you guys in the next video.